Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, g'day YouTubers, Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're going to talk about chainsaw racing chains you may have seen it on some of the still sports where they've got the handsaw they cut through the log then they uh jump up on a plank and they start uh cutting into a, a log and see how long it takes before they can chop through then they jump onto a modified chainsaw with the expansion chamber and a really sharp racing chain so I'm just going to talk about those racing chains because if you have a better understanding or more knowledge about uh, chainsaw tooth geometry, uh, then you'll have a better understanding of how it works and how it gets rid of the chips. And, you know, we can talk about narrow kerfs. That's always been a little bit of a, uh, a point that uh, I don't like narrow kerf chains because they're only for small saws as far as I'm concerned. They have their place. Uh, some of the professional saws, uh, the MS, I think, 260 or something like that there, it has a slightly narrower kerf. Look, a slightly narrower kerf is okay. I've got no problems with that. But you don't want one to, like, 043 gauge. I don't like touching anything that's 043 gauge. Too small, except for my little uh, still GTA uh, 26 uh, hand pruner. That's a very, very thin chain narrow kerf and, and in that in that situation yes but as far as a chainsaw goes the the smallest chain that i ever run is 050 gauge and even then i don't run it in semi chisel i run it in full chisel and it works fine so the other thing that they do we'll talk about number one they remove a lot of, on a racing chain they remove the back metal off the tooth so that's, that's uh, one part where they, they want to reduce the weight. And they also want to remove as much metal as possible so that they can get rid of the chips much quicker. Because some of these chains are spinning much, much faster than the standard chain. They need to get rid of the chips properly and efficiently. And the best way to do that. So we're going to go over all the things that they remove. They also grind the rivets down so that the rivets barely protrude. So they remove quite a lot of the rivets, uh, the height of the rivets, not the diameter. So they grind them right down. That's another thing. The raker, they don't lower the raker. Uh, they may have maybe a millimeter or so on their raker. They'll lower that, but they'll thin the raker down this way. So they'll make it thinner. And they'll also take minimal, they'll leave minimal amount of metal in there so the raker doesn't bend. So they, they trim everything off with the file or the grinder. So that's another thing that they do. Uh, the other thing is they the tie straps. They file the edge along here and they'll put a 45 degree bevel on it and a lot of them will even file all around here. They call it clipping. So they'll file that to reduce weight. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to reduce, make the chain a lot lighter, up to 10 or 15%. Uh, and as I said, they put a, uh, a bit of a uh, 45 degree. This is called heel clipping. When they, This is the, the toe and this is the heel. So they can do toe clipping or heel clipping. And they can file a little bit around these edges, all around the whole lot there to try to reduce weight. So it's really sort of, yeah. Yeah, some race chains are reduced by 15% weight. So that's quite a lot. And it's always uh, full chisel square ground. Uh, the other thing that they do in the gullet, they really make, get the file and make this very deep, really deep, even a bit deeper than what I've got here. They also file half the tooth is is filed away so you've only got this type of section left with tooth so half the tooth is gone so it reduces a lot of weight but it also reduces uh makes it a lot easier for the chips to get out and you can see all this being removed the chips yeah they'll file even down into the gullet 
that deep. So it's actually quite a lot. Uh, the other thing is, uh, what's the other thing that they do? The inner, okay, tunneling. A lot of times what they do, also on the top of the tooth, you'll see on the top of the tooth here, they'll follow, all this will be removed, and the corner, the corner can have that being removed as well. Sometimes they might take a half a mil off the tooth on the inside. The other thing that they do, it's called tunneling. And what they do, they grind the inside of this a little bit, and especially the corner, they thin this out a little bit. So normally on a tooth, there's a little bit more metal here. They thin it out so it looks a little bit more like this, less metal. So you can see that there's actually quite a lot that they do. Uh, it's yeah. So after that, uh, the ch the chain just needs a lot more space to get rid of the chips, and uh, you know they port and polish the motor, change the timing on it put the expansion chamber on the other thing that they do is also on the drive link they can file the bumps down so it just depends on how fussy the person wants to get now one of my friends he actually races and does this but yeah you know, I'm not going to tell you what he does because he doesn't want me to sort of say oh that he does it this way or he does it that way because a lot of them yeah, you know, they've got their own little secrets uh it gives them the edge uh, over another, uh, their competitors. But this type of information that I'm giving you is fairly common amongst uh, chainsaw racers. So we'll just briefly go over that again. Where I've got the blue, this is all the parts that are removed. Excess metal is taken away so that you're left with a bare minimum, a small tooth. And also under here in texture, all in blue here all along here and even on the edge here they'll they'll like uh, thin it out a little bit where possible where now the other thing is with the rivets they grind them down and after they actually grind them down they polish them because if they've got a very high polish if they're polished highly uh, less resistance they'll be much smoother as they go through the timber so you can actually learn quite a lot from a person that races chains with the geometry and you can understand that the best chain out there is just full chisel uh, square ground now normally the top plate angle on most of them is going to be around the 30 uh, 30 degree mark some some may even want to go a little bit more than 30 degrees it's all customized so at home they'll play around with their race chain and they'll do a few experiments and they'll go with that and you'll find out that most chains will look very similar and it's interesting when you look at it because they after they file they run the file over the top and around the edges you know using a very thin file and they'll put a 45 degree uh, bevel on here some have even put a 45 degree bevel on the bottom uh, just to get rid of uh, more weight. And, and that's what they do. And I guess, yeah, if you're someone that spends a lot of time uh, doing this and you're getting good results, then you get the edge over your competitor. But it is very interesting when we talk about, when we say clean your gullet out. And that's the reason that you clean your gullet out because the more space that you've got here, uh, the quicker the chips will get out, and this is what I've. This is why I don't like narrow kerf chains on larger chainsaws because they it can be very. Uh, they can get a little bit grabby. They get too much sawdust in there, and it slows, drains the horsepower, and slows it all down. As I said, I don't mind uh, a slightly narrower kerf, but I don't like 043 gauge because it's uh, it's too small as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's only good for very, very small handheld battery operated chainsaws. For a petrol chainsaw, I like at least 30 cc's, 35 cc's with a uh, 14 inch bar to 16 inch bar and uh, 3 8 low profile with a uh, full chisel chain and it'll cut really well for me. And I don't go, don't, don't go too deep on the rakers. 
because the more you go on the rakers, the more it will bog down. So it's a little bit of a balance balance there. Uh, you've got to get your raker depth right. I only use progressive depth gauges. I don't use the normal one, but if I was using a uh, narrow curve chain, I might tend to try and keep my raker depth at 0.065 uh, of a millimeter. So on the racing chains, you're going to have to experiment with your raker depth because if you go too deep and it bogs down, the last thing you want is to stall the the saw. So they've got to be a little bit careful with that. Uh, but depending on it, you know, you could be one one mil or even a little bit more, one and a half mil maximum on your rakers. It, it just depends on the timber they're cutting, the power of the saw, and it depends on a lot of factors, but certainly they go deeper than 0.65 of a millimeter on, on racing chains. Look, I hope that information helps. It opens your eyes a little bit that uh, what people can do with chainsaws. Not a lot of information out there on YouTube uh, because as I said, people don't want to share the information because uh, it can, you'd be stupid to tell people if you're, if you're one of the world's uh, best, you're not going to, tell people how you uh, prepare your chains are you and and rightly so anyway thanks for watching give us a thumbs up uh, bye for now